why are girls getting their periods so young? So I want to read something from you from um, Scientific American magazine. I printed it out and it says that Megan was heartbroken that her seven-year-old was menstruating but not completely surprised. She had begun to notice her daughter's body odor when Josie was six. By the time Josie turned seven, she was getting blackheads on her nose, slamming doors and sleeping late. She developed the breast buds the summer before second grade that was traumatizing for both of us, Megan said. The average age of a girl's first period in the U.S. is now 12, according to the most recent data from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention's National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, down from 14 a century ago and as much as six months earlier than 20 or 30 years ago. Menarche is instead triggered by the change in a girl's estrogen levels. The most probable explanation for why periods and breast development might be happening younger is that girls tend to weigh more today than they did a generation ago. And this higher body fat percentage is leading to early activation of the pituitary gland, which produces the hormones responsible for puberty. So why is this happening? This is happening due to a chronic exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals. These chemicals are able to mimic natural estrogen in the body, which is causing estrogen dominance. A lot of these mimicked estrogens, these false hormones that are pretending to be our hormones are coming from plastics. They're coming from dairy, especially. They're coming from the meat. They're coming from shower curtains, things of that nature. There is a synergism, a crosstalk between the brain and all of the endocrine glands, the thyroid gland, the adrenal glands, the gonads, which are the reproductive glands. This synergism is critical to have proper hormone balance. So when you have an issue that you think has to do with the reproductive area, it doesn't always necessarily mean that the issue is coming from there. It could be a pituitary issue. It could be an adrenal issue. It could be a thyroid issue, for instance, the thyroid and the adrenal gland are a complementary pair when functioning properly. If either gland is weak, the other will be affected. The brain keeps trying to stimulate the malfunctioning organ with the, the brain organs, the hypothalamus and the pituitary in the brain. And if this conversation that's happening internally is not able to have a fluid, smooth transition, there is going to be an uh, there's going to be issues with how your hormones are balanced or not balanced. There is a myriad of external and internal substances that are capable of binding to estrogen receptors in the body, and they act as antagonists to disturb the synergy, the relationship between the hormonal organs or glands. We know that for every year you delay monarch, a woman's period, a girl's period, you decrease the risk of premenopausal and postmenopausal breast cancer by 4 to 8 percent. What are things that can help clear out estrogen? One of the main things is the brassica plants. Well, plants are able to mitigate the severity of endocrine disruptors and they offer positive hormonal influences. Brassica improves the clearance of estrogen. Brassica meaning kale, cabbage, mustard greens, uh, Brussels sprouts. If you are in the age of alkaline, this conversation is not for you. I still do enjoy Brussels sprouts. And the, the reason that the Brassica family is so excellent at clearing out estrogen is because it has a chemical called, a natural chemical called sulforaphane. And sulforaphane is formed when cruciferous vegetables such as Brussels sprouts or kale are blended and chewed. But the only thing is that you have to be aware of is brassica or cruciferous vegetables are not good if you have an underactive thyroid because it contains thyroid inhibitors called goitrogens. So all in all, many hormone receptors are regulated by diet, stress, the thyroid and adrenal hormones, um, the sleep patterns, and this from the age of eight or sometimes in utero, depending on the mother's diet, this is going to create something for the child's life. These issues that a lot of women are facing now with PCOS, fibroids, endometriosis, a lot of them are not things that just started when you became 25 or 35 or 40. These are things that have been happening since that you were seven, eight or 12 when you get your early menses. You need 
to do better with dieting, with stress, making sure that you're sleeping, eliminating alcohol, eliminating sugar. The poor flow of energy circulating through the reproductive organs. This is what imbalances hormones. This dampness, this yin. You need to get circulation and movement in these hormones so that we could eradicate waste. Don't look at an issue as only being here. Look at it as being here, here, and here. And this is one of the reasons why we recommend full body detoxing because just because you have an issue with endometriosis doesn't mean that the all you could do is just drink something like Jamaican dog blood to deal with this issue. We need to deal with your liver too because your liver needs to be able to clear out unwanted substances. Focus on here, focus on here, and then even focus on things that are helpful for the brain, for the hypothalamus and the pituitary, which are essential in sending signals to the rest of your body of what you need. Dairy has got to go. If you're gonna have fish, it has to be wild caught. If you're gonna have chicken, oh, it needs to be organic, but it needs to be in a limited, limited, limited quantities because their hormones are disturbing your hormones and jumping on the receptors that are meant for natural estrogen. They are taking up the space that's supposed to be here and they look exactly like it. So if this is the um, receptor, sometimes you have something that looks exactly like it that's able to fit in that place and we have to get rid of these mimickers, these fakers. We have to get rid of these false, um, these false hormones as much as possible, and detoxing quarterly is going to help you get there. If you have a particular issue, the detoxing is most likely going to have to be for a minimum of two months while remaining at least 80% plant-based because it takes a about four months to really see a significant change when it comes to reproductive issues. Mothers, if you have daughters, do not give them dairy. Hemp milk is a, a better substitute. And do and stay away from um, the birth control that they recommended now at 12 years old. These are the things that we have to be aware of because they are going to destroy this child in the later future. All right, appreciate you. Peace and love. Thank you.